what's up guys welcome back to another session of hash series uh, i'll be just continuing on today with my uh, sessions on adverse drug reactions a few things that we will uh, discuss today the first of that would be something on teratogenicity the word teratogenicity means um, harmful effects of a drug uh, on to the fetus okay, on the fetus when the woman is pregnant okay so that is what you mean by teratogenicity uh, all drugs as you know have the potential to cause adverse drug reactions and drugs have the ability to cross placenta okay so they can cross the placental barrier and they have an impact on the growing uh, fetus inside the womb so that's the reason that some of these drugs can cause a uh, kind of adverse uh, drug reactions on the fetus and these um, effects can be a permanent loss for the fetus in his life to come okay so that is what is a worrying factor now this all started you know something very interesting is all started with a drug uh, called as thalidomide okay uh, thalidomide was uh, prescribed uh, in 1950s or 60s somewhere i was not even born at that time okay so uh, so the drug was prescribed um, and this drug uh, incidentally caused sealed limbs okay limbs which were um, not fully grown so that's where all these things uh, started coming up like okay so drugs may have adverse drug reaction on the fetus and cause permanent damage to them and so on in fact the very starting of something called as pharmacovigilance i'll come to that in the few sessions to come it started all with this kind of a uh, clinical scenarios where babies born with um, no limbs um, or sealed limbs as they call it as so it all started with that the awareness that drugs do have impact on the growing fetus now coming back okay so uh, as you know or must be aware of um, you know uh, fetus uh, grows inside the uh, uh, womb in stages the first few days of life the first few weeks of life rather i should say are uh, something which are the which which form the building blocks for the fetus to grow so these are the cells which divide and then divide and they cause something called as a, a small skeletal so this is the point okay so this is the point of fertilization implantation and so on so if a woman is taking a drug uh, which is having harmful effect uh, onto the growing fetus mostly what happens is that uh, it all ends up in abortion it all ends up in abortion uh, the fetus just cannot grow in the presence of this noxious stimuli which is been given by the drug so it all ends mostly mostly so it's very tricky also because most of the pregnancies are not detected for a, for a one or two for 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 a, a month to come so then they realize okay they are pregnant and so on so that's the crucial time so if you are prescribing a fertile lady uh, maybe you also want to ask uh, her about um, uh, whether there are any chances of she getting pregnant uh, in the few days to come Uh, the reason being if you are prescribing any drug which is a known teratogen you don't want the lady to end up into some kind of abortion or something of that sort so that that's the crucial part but uh, it's usually seen that fetus doesn't grow uh, uh, in fact it all ends up uh, if you prescribe a teratogen uh, at this point the later part of the pregnancy uh, then i should say for the next few months to come is all, all about organs being developed okay so any drug given at this point may end up in uh, the organs not being fully developed not being fully developed and uh, so even at this point a person should be careful of prescribing any drugs in fact the entire pregnancy as a doctor you should be very much aware that drugs uh, can cause any problems so counseling uh, seeing the risk benefit ratios when prescribing drugs uh, or in fact i should say try to give drugs uh, which are probably safe uh, so there are a lot of clinical evidence that these drugs are safe and so on so those prescribe um, otherwise just uh, refrain from prescribing drugs uh, if uh, needed uh, then the last resort should be any kind of a treatment 
and the last part of the system would be when a growing fetus is something of growth and development so first it was like cell divisions the second stage would be of organ development the last stage is everything is now developed it, it is just needs to grow up so uh, you try to give drugs during this last phase um, it might affect the growth of an individual uh, growth of the fetus not of an individual uh, of course of an individual but of a fetus yes uh, and uh, uh, need to be careful so you do roughly divide uh, uh, pregnancy into three parts and then see what happens so the first part should be mostly abortions the next two should be uh, malformations uh, problems with organ development growth retardation and so on uh, so that's roughly about teratogenicity but something to add more to it uh, a few examples that come to my mind okay which example should I give okay we talk of uh, uh, phenytoin, anticonvulsant, okay, uh, widely prescribed, isn't it, across the globe? Uh, so yes, phenytoin uh, is a teratogenic drug and cause uh, problems uh, in the fetus. It can cause a lot of uh, problems with cleft palate and so on. Um, then uh, steroids, you know, sex sex hormones, okay, estrogen, progesterone, and so on. A um, lot of problems with the fetus. Uh, can bring up a lot of malformations. Uh, uh, drinking ethyl alcohol, uh, alcohol for pleasure, but alcohol is also a drug, isn't it? Right? So, uh, uh, especially women who are pregnant uh, should uh, not be drinking, but if they drink too much, then this can cause craniofacial malformations, uh, malformations with CNS development, growth retardation. Uh, then something regarding tetracyclines, uh, broad spectrum antibiotics uh, cause deformities with bones, teeth, uh, and anti acne product, uh, the teratogenic drug isotretinoin, uh, cause a lot of craniofacial malformations, growth um, uh, retardation, multiple defects. Um, cancer chemotherapies, yes, they are known teratogenic drugs, so yes, they have all the potential to cause a lot of multiple uh, defects. Uh, in a child and so on. Uh, so these are the drugs which uh, are um, you know, roughly examples of teratogenic drugs. Uh, now the FDA, that is the Food and Drug Administration, uh, has classified drugs uh, into something called as A, B, C, D and X. Again I am not teaching here A, B, C, D, A doesn't stand for Apple. Uh, so it's, it's something different. So it's A, B, C, D and X. Okay. So A is probably the most safest drugs because the clinical data, uh, the animal studies have documented uh, that it should is a risk-free drug. So you can prescribe it in a pregnant woman and uh, not expect any defects in the child. But as you move on from A to B, B to C, C to D and D to then X, X. Okay, the X factor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, nothing to do with that. Okay, the X. Okay. The X. Oh my God. Okay, the X category of drugs. Right. Yes. So the X category of drugs is supposed to be the most teratogenic agents. Uh, so drugs included would be acne, anti-acne products uh, like isotretinoin uh, uh, and uh, hormones like estrogen. So the teratogenic, if you give these drugs, you know, there has to be some of the other defect in the child. So need to ask about pregnancy um, in a fertile lady if you are going to prescribe these agents. So it goes from A to B, B to C, C to D and D to X, but all in an increasing manner of teratogenicity. So X drugs are supposed to be the most teratogenic drugs when A are supposed to be the safest drugs to be prescribed in pregnancy. Uh, now it also relates to a few drugs which in fact can be given during pregnancy. Okay, So if you want to uh, curtail on defects, uh, especially CNS, CNS defects, uh, you can give, in fact, folate supplementation is given across the globe to prevent uh, uh, any kind of uh, CNS uh, defects in the fetus. Uh, now, that, that doesn't mean that all drugs uh, need to be scanned. No, it's not like that. Uh, but the thing is, 
uh, few drugs which are known teratogenic should be in your list so that before prescribing at least those drugs you need to be aware that these drugs can um, cause any problem but again you should be looking at the risk benefit ratio right if the risk uh, associated with the drug is more as compared to the benefit maybe you put down on the drug but at times you know life threatening conditions you want to prescribe a drug uh, then maybe you need to look into uh, maintaining the life uh, as against just maintaining the pregnancy so in a lot of clinical scenarios do come uh, when you are prescribing especially um, in pregnancy and so on so it's a special medical condition and teratogenic drugs do have an important role to play as far as uh, prescribing is concerned so that was uh, about uh, teratogenicity the next thing which i need to discuss with you is something on uh, what i should say is a few drugs which can induce diseases right so it's not that all drugs uh, uh, at all times are meant for cure of diseases some drugs can in fact induce diseases right uh, a few of them common examples would be drugs NSAIs, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs uh, examples should be aspirin so aspirin is a drug which can cause uh, gastritis peptic ulcers and so on so it can induce a person to diseases uh, anti tuberculosis drugs um, uh, examples uh, rifampicin uh, pyrazinamide uh, INH that is isoniazide can cause hepatitis so a few drugs can also cause diseases so these are also grouped under uh, adverse drug reactions so special category of drugs which can in fact induce diseases uh, hydrolyzin can cause um, uh, uh, SLE and so on so a few drugs uh, with unique uh, disease pattern you can see if you are giving it for a considerable long period of time so another way of looking at ADRs isn't it uh, then the last in the category for today uh, will be uh, the term called as idiosyncrasy. Okay, so idiosyncrasy is what? It's it's genetic predisposition. Okay, remember genetic predisposition to a particular side effect of a drug. Okay, certain individuals, certain group of individuals um, are prone to specific toxicities of a drug. And remember, these toxicities can be life-threatening and can just come up with one dose of a particular drug. So that's, that's what is the issue with idiosyncrasy. So they can be life-threatening, full-blown cases with just a single dose of a drug. Because the person is genetically prone to particular side effect of a drug. Uh, so there would be individuals or there would be a group of individuals. Uh, uh, you can need to be aware or you need to we just put down drugs for that person a particular drug for this person or for that group of uh, individuals so examples for that should be uh, antibiotic again a broad spectrum antibiotic like trodamphenicol has the full potential to cause a rare aplastic anemias um, uh, in uh, individuals with just a few doses right uh, then uh, examples uh, um, many examples right which one to think of Examples like you know, barbiturates. Uh, barbiturates are supposed to be the drugs which uh, uh, you know uh, are given for sedation and so on. So these drugs, uh, in fact, cause reverse of that. So these drugs can cause mental confusion, excitement, anxiety in a few individuals. So again, uh, relates to uh, gene-specific uh, types, and this then this condition uh, is then called as idiosyncrasy. Uh, so that's uh, uh, one way of, uh, and in fact, alternative way of looking at uh, adverse drug reactions. Uh, I hope you like my session for today. A short session, isn't it? But a few more sessions to come on ADRs. Um, thank you for watching my videos. Now, since you have watched my entire video, I think uh, it should be okay with you to click on the like button if you have liked the video. Do subscribe to my channel. Keep watching.